Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to today's conference, uh, conference number 32, entitled Radical Change. Today we'll be learning when we really start that uh, radical change and how we can achieve it through self-observation. So the first thing we have to know is that as long as a man continues with the error of believing himself um, to be one unique individual, it is evident that radical change will be more than impossible. The reason is that we are not one, but rather many. Within us, um, there are many different people, so we are never the same or act in the same way. At one moment, we are happy, and at another, we are sad. At one moment, we are petty. At another, we are splendid. At one moment, we are angry, and at another, we feel fear. At one moment, we are in love, and at another, we feel hate. They are all different people with different feelings, behaviors, and thoughts living within us and expressing through us. We have the false perception that we are one because our defects express themselves in first person. And that gives us that false feeling of integrity and continuity. For example, we usually express this way. We say, I am sad. I am happy. I am remember that 97% of our essence is trapped by all these defects or psychological defects. Our essence is divided, dispersed, and they are the ones who mechanically manage our human machine and its functions. When we eliminate our psychological defects and release the totality of our essences and merge them through the practice of suprasex, it is when we will truly achieve true integrity or sacred individuality. Therefore, the radical change will not start if we cannot demonstrate the reality that we aren't one but many. The very fact that the esoteric work begins with the rigorous observation of oneself is indicating a multiplicity of psychological factors, eyes or undesirable elements that um, is urgent to remove, eradicate from our interior. Unquestionably, in no way would it be possible to eliminate unknown errors. It is urgent to previously observe that what we want to separate or eliminate from our psyche. If there is no self-observation, there is no discovery. And if there is no discovery, there will be no change. How could we change what we can't see, what we haven't discovered yet? This is how the radical change begins. We observe ourselves, we discover the defects, and then we ask our Divine Mother for their elimination. Let's remember what self-observation is. Self-observation is to carefully observe our inner world, our thoughts, feelings, desires, sensations. Um, it is to observe how the defects want to manifest themselves through each one of our centers. Let's give an example in which we go down the street and see a person who seems attractive to us. We begin to observe ourselves center by center and we realize how the sexual center is activated and we can observe and feel a sensation of excitement. In our instinct, we feel the attraction and desire towards that person. In the emotion, we can see feelings of falling in love. In the mind, we see the idealizations, the plans, the projections, the fantasies, and the motor center leads us to act by complimenting the person, making flirtatious gestures, or asking the person for the phone number. So we, we call them uh, later. Seeing all these details leads us to advance a lot around those lustful, fornicating, and adulterous defects. The same will happen with all the other defects. Anger, jealousy, fear, hatred, alcohol, drugs, fornication, envy, pride, greed, etc., etc. The thing is that at this point, we don't even know we have those defects within ourselves. That is due to lack of self-observation. 
This type of work is not external but internal, and those who think that any manual of civility or external and superficial ethical system can uh, lead them to success will in fact be totally wrong. The concrete and um, definitive fact that intimate work begins with concentrated attention on full self-observation is more than enough reason to demonstrate that this requires a very particular personal effort from each one of us. Speaking frankly and bluntly, we emphatically state the following, no human being could do this job for us. No change in our psyche is possible without direct observation of all this set of subjective factors that we carry within ourselves. Accepting the multiplicity of errors, but rolling out the need to study and directly observe them means in fact an evasion or escape, a flight out from oneself, a form of self-deception. Only through rigorous effort of judicious self-observation, without escapes of any kind, can we truly demonstrate that we are not one but many. Accepting this as one more uh, theory or concept for the mind will not do anything for us, because if there is no self-observation, there is no true self-discovery, and we will not be able to truly demonstrate those people living within us. Admitting the plurality of the self, of the ego, and demonstrating it through rigorous observation are two different aspects. Someone can accept um, the doctrine of the many eyes without ever having evidenced it. Um, the latter is only possible by carefully observing oneself. Affirming is one thing and understanding um, is another. Okay, uh, When someone says, I understand that I'm not one but many, if his understanding or comprehension is true, and not mere insubstantial, ambiguous talk. This indicates signals of full verification of the doctrine of the many eyes. Shunning the work of intimate observation, seeking evasions, is an unmistakable sign of degeneration, from really not wanting to make any internal changes. As long as as a man sustains the illusion that uh, he is always one and the same person, he cannot change. And it is obvious that the purpose of this work is precisely to achieve a gradual change in our inner life. Uh, there is another very important point to know, which is that changes uh, uh, resulting from working on ourselves are gradual, uh, gradual but total changes. Um, they do not occur from one day to the next. We have very big defects made up of many details. Therefore, if we maintain continuity, uh, progress will, will be uh, gradual, but radical. Radical transformation is a definite possibility that is usually lost when you don't work on yourself. Those who reject the doctrine of the many eyes clearly demonstrate that they have never seriously observed themselves. Since the severe self-observation with without escapes of any kind allows us to verify for ourselves the crude uh, realism that we are not one, but many. <laughs> Unquestionably, the uh, illusion that we are always one and the same person serves as a stumbling block for self-observation. Evidencing, experimenting, and comprehending are the fundamental things. Only in this way it is possible to work consciously to achieve a radical change. We can evidence through self-observation that um, leads us to discover the defects and to experience the actions of those defects through us and to the um, subsequent understanding that it is a different defect manifesting which is different from others. Uh, we have to discover the defect, see it in action, judge it, and eliminate it. 
Here, we will see the process of psychological death that begins with self-observation, then comes the judgment from which uh, we um, uh, derive the wisdom or comprehension, and finally, the death request to our Divine Mother so that she eliminates this defect from our psychology. Knowledge and comprehension are different uh, things also. The first of this is from the mind, the second from the heart, and is received through intuition. The mere knowledge of the doctrine of the many eyes is useless. Unfortunately, in these times in which we live, knowledge has gone far beyond comprehension because the poor intellectual animal, mistakenly called man, all of us, <laughs> exclusively developed the side of knowledge, unfortunately forgetting the corresponding side of the being. Knowing the doctrine of the many defects and comprehending it is essential for all true radical change. When a man begins to look closely at himself, to observe himself from the angle that he's not one but many, he has obviously begun serious work on his inner nature. Although it is true that the work on ourselves is done uh, gradually, there are some defects with uh, which we must be totally radical from the very start because they are defects that revive dead defects, eyes that we have previously eliminated with psychological death. These are the defects of drugs alcohol and fornication. Let's remember that drugs and alcohol contaminate our energy and put it in an involutionary state. In a sexual practice, this energy that cannot ascend because it is contaminated, is polluted, uh, will always be expelled from the body through ejaculation or orgasm. And there, new defects are created, and defects that we, have, um, we had already eliminated are revived. By doing this, radical change is impossible because the defects that we eliminate during the day are revived at night through sexual faults or fornication. Um, therefore, we must uh, abstain from drugs, alcohol, and fornication which we remember is the expulsion of sexual energy out of our body through ejaculation or orgasm. Um, and well, this has been today's uh, conference. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for your assistance. We invite you to the next conference called The Law of Octaves and Entropy, two universal laws that we most transcend if we want um, to advance in our inner work. So, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Until next time. And also, uh, before finishing, if you have any question about this topic or any other uh, of this course, you can uh, leave them in the comments and we'll be answering them there. Okay? Bye.